It's nine minutes past six o'clock. Now, reports are that at least 15 people have died today in Pakistan as anti-Western protests sparked off by that controversial American movie Innocence of Muslims spread across the country. Rob Quilly of the Daily Telegraph is there. He joins me now. At least 15 dead. Uh, Rob, what can you tell us about uh, the events there today? Well, it's been a day of protests across the country, and uh, many of these demonstrations uh, erupted into violence. The government had declared a a holiday so that people could actually uh, come out onto the streets and express their love for the Prophet Muhammad. Um, But unfortunately, um, in Karachi in particular, the demonstrations turned to violence. We know that at least nine people were killed there. And then in the northwestern city of Peshawar, uh, four people uh, dead. Um, And we expect the death toll to probably increase um, during the night. Um, It's been a a case today of a number of demonstrations turning violent. Um, The people killed, we think, largely killed by police gunfire as police try to stop um, these violent protests uh, attacking American uh, diplomatic missions or other uh, key government buildings. So there were um, pretty intense scenes here in the capital, Islamabad. Uh, Several thousand protesters tried to march on the diplomatic enclave, but actually police were successful in in keeping them back. But a pretty angry day across the country. And what's the assessment at this stage, Rob, of of the police response? Is it seen as proportionate uh, to the level of protest that's been taking place? Well, the sad fact is that Pakistan has a long history of violence and the death toll so far today is pretty mild by the warped yardstick of local standards. Um, so at the moment, there's no, um, there's no criticism of the police. That may come later. Um, but in fact, a lot of people are thinking, well, at least things weren't even worse. Across the country, there were something like 45,000 protesters, which... In Pakistan, which has 180 million people, means uh, most people avoided these protests. So, you know, I I think there's something of a sigh of relief uh, so far. Mm. I want to ask you in a moment for the response to this ad that uh, has been broadcast on Pakistani TV, but I want to let our listeners have a chance to see it. Uh, The US government has been broadcasting this ad on Pakistani television channels. It's an attempt to diffuse the situation and features a statement from Barack Obama and also this one from Hillary Clinton. Let me state very clearly, and I hope it is obvious, that the United States government had absolutely nothing to do with this video. We absolutely reject its content and message. America's commitment to religious tolerance goes back to the very beginning of our nation. Hillary Clinton there. Rob, is this the crux of the problem that um, Pakistanis are blaming the West and they're blaming America? And even that ad by Hillary Clinton there doesn't get that message across that the government is not responsible for this. Yes, there's a huge gulf of understanding here. Ordinary Pakistanis just don't understand how this video could have been made and that the filmmakers are not being prosecuted for what is what they consider to be a, an act of blasphemy. You know, the Americans are trying to make a, a, a reasonably complex point here, which is that they stand behind the idea of freedom of expression, freedom of speech, but at the same time condemn this movie. Now, that is an argument which people here just don't understand. We had the Prime Minister this morning calling for the United Nations and for the American authorities um, to take action against the filmmakers, to prosecute them, and to introduce laws to make it impossible for this sort of film to be made in the future. Now, the argument that's being put out by uh, America may well be the American position, but it's sort of too little, too late, and is not the sort of thing that will be understood here. Rob Crilly of the Daily Telegraph, thank you very much for for joining us. We're going to continue to talk about this because the controversy over the film is reminiscent of the violence which followed the publication of 12 cartoons portraying the prophet in a Danish newspaper seven years ago. Is it possible to make fun of religion with an Islamic audi- audience without causing offence? Well, I'm joined by comedian A.B. Philbin Bowman, who performed in Pakistan in the middle of a state of emergency there in 2007. He's here in studio with me to tell me how his material went down with that audience. Uh, A.B., tell me first of all how you came to be in Pakistan. Uh, 
I was invited to uh, to a festival called the World Performing Arts Festival, uh, which is held in Lahore, and it's actually run by the same company who've since been commissioned to run the Pakistani version of Sesame Street, commissioned by the US government to, to make that, called Sim Sim Hamara. And they were been running a festival for about 15 years, which began as an international puppet festival, became a sort of dance and theatre festival, and I think that was the first time they had comedy. Mm. Um, and they invited me to do a show called Jesus, the Guantanamo Years. Which, mm. Jesus, which you're well known for, which, which you, well, you've Jesus, performed around the world. Yeah, I've performed in various places. And, and do they offer you any guidance or guidelines or rules around your performance? There's the one thing the they said is, you could use. They did the, the one. The one thing they said is don't make fun of Musharraf because he's been a fun, supporter of this festival for a long time. Then this the leader Pervez, of, uh, indeed, of Pakistan, General Pervez Musharraf, who'd taken control. And I said, well, of course he's a fan of your festival. He's the world's biggest international puppet, so that would make sense that he would support a festival like that. But so I wasn't allowed to make that joke on stage. But actually, what I found was the audience was incredibly responsive to. Uh, and, and bear in mind, Jesus is a prophet in Islam. So mm. Muslims regard Jesus as a prophet. If the Taliban had been running Pakistan, I would have been beheaded for, for doing this production. And I found the audience was remarkably open and interested. Now, I should preface that by saying they were an English-speaking audience. I, okay. I don't speak Urdu, so I was speaking English. Therefore, they are people who are, by definition, somewhat more educated. More, more liberal. More, more liberal, probably. Um, but I, I think the point I would make is it's very easy to turn on the evening news and see this going on and think, oh, those crazy Muslims, they can't take a joke. And I think it's significantly more complex than that. In, in Certainly where this protest kicked off in Libya and in Egypt, uh, you, have, you had re- regimes there which control the media completely, where, where anything that was in the p- papers or on television had got the implicit say, OK, of the government. So when people in that culture see something, in, see an American film or a Danish cartoon, they assume that that's been OK'd by the government. Mm, which like brings it, us to what Rob Crilly was saying earlier well, exactly. when we ran that clip of Hillary Clinton Indeed. trying to distance the government of it's, what had happened. It, that lack of understanding of freedom of speech mm. and governments standing back. It, it's as if you've been reading Hello magazine all your life and then one day you open an issue and said Barack Obama shows us around his lovely home and talks about his deep contempt for the Prophet Muhammad. You'd assume he'd said that was OK and he'd gone along with that and that's how you'd understand it. I mean, it's, it, the freedom of speech thing, it's like in this country you would be free if you wanted to make a film saying that all working class people were drug addicts and prostitutes and criminals. You'd be lambasted for saying it rightly. But if you showed that film in Mountjoy, you'd have a riot and we all understand why. So it's not as alien or as distant as, as it, it can come across on screen and I would also say that it's important to remember there are loads of Muslims not getting involved in this, watching this with horror. Uh, I mean, what, I, what really struck me in, when I was in Pakistan was how much they laughed at, I was mocking religious fundamentalists who misunderstand Jesus' message, misunderstand Muhammad's message. And that's, that, you know, there's a lot of Pakistanis and, and uh, Egyptians throwing their hands up going, this is terrible. And, and I think it's important to see this violence is being fomented by religious conservatives who, in the power vacuum that's been left in Egypt and Libya, are desperately trying to alienate the West. Have you watched the film? Uh, I, the, the film, the, the, I've, the, the I've, I've Innocence watched, of Muslims. I've watched clips of it online. Yeah. It's actually unwatchably uh, bad. It's it, it's 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 uh, it, it's describing Muhammad as a fool. It, uh, it is a, offensive, yeah, uh, it and is. there's sexual innu- innuendo as well, which oh, will be deeply offensive it, to, it, it, to Muslims. It is designed to wind Muslims up. It's designed to make him out to be this ridiculous person. I, I mean, and it, but also it's incredibly badly dubbed because the actors weren't actually saying these lines; they were dubbed in afterwards by the filmmaker, who has a clear agenda to wind Muslims up. I actually think part of the solution to this could be if we made a another film about Muhammad where we depict him as a rhinoceros living on Pluto who speaks Portuguese because if you do that that's so ridiculous I think it would realise it doesn't matter what you say in a film it doesn't reflect reality now whether that's too subtle a point I don't know mm-hmm. but uh, I, I do think you have to bear in mind in Pakistan particularly there's huge anger about the drone strikes that are killing innocent people about the war in Afghanistan about ongoing sort of US arrogance under Bush and uh, Guantanamo growing Palestine. anti-Western uh, this is a flashpoint and, and this, yeah. is, this is an anger which can be exploited then by religious conservatives showing the film and trying to get people wound up but that anger but base anger is already there we've seen the the role that comedy can play down down through the years in many co- conflicts not least in this country mm. Do you see comedy as having a role? I do. I think in, I think responsible comedy. I think I, th- I think I think you know it's, it's who like decides a, responsible. Well, I think it's I think the I think you owe a duty to yourself, to yourself as an artist actually to, to I mean I mean you know if you want to make a name for yourself as a crazy controversial comedian you can do you can say you know 
something very offensive about Muhammad. I don't think that's particularly insightful or intuitive. I, I think it's beholden on you as a comedian and you owe it to your audience to try and understand what's going on and explain that in a funny way. And that's what I always try and do. Um, and I, I don't have much time for people who just make stuff to be controversial. I think it's quite lazy and quite boring, To, to come back to your trip to Pakistan in, in 2007, and you say that nobody gave you any, any guidance or rules around, you, around your performances other than not insulting the president at the mm. time. Um, did you have any response afterwards? I and mean, did, did people come up to you and say, I found that offensive, I wish you hadn't used that joke, I wish you hadn't insulted Jesus? Mm. They actually said the exact opposite. And it's the same message I had in America, actually, which was people coming to me saying, thank you for reclaiming Jesus from the crazy fundamentalists who claim they speak for him. And and that the whole point of the show was that Jesus was quite a funny, charismatic guy who is baffled by how people who call themselves fundamentalists have I, missed I wonder, things like though, love and tolerance and, and forgiveness. Five, five years on, back mm. in 2007, do you think you could go back to Pakistan now and do the same or a similar show? I, I, I don't know is the answer. I mean, I was very disturbed by the killing of Salman Tassir, the, the politician who defended a role of blasphemy. But I do think it's important. There was a case very recently in Pakistan of a, a young Christian girl accused of burning pages of an Islamic holy book. It turned out that a local imam had planted those pages because he wanted to kick Christians out of the neighbourhood and didn't care who he offended in doing it. And so you just have to be aware there are people who are trying to divide us all the time. And actually there's an awful lot more common ground than we like to necessarily assume when we look at the evening Comedian A.B. Philbin Bowen, thank you for coming into us. 20 minutes past six o'clock. And A.B. Philman Bowman was telling me, Philman Bowman was telling me that he's appearing tonight at Smock Alley as part of the Dublin Fringe. That's at seven o'clock. 